In this next video, I'm going to show the basic menu navigation of the core radio. The first thing you'll notice when you look at the screen, there's a row of six icons down at the bottom. These are functional buttons. The first one on the left is the unlock icon. This is for your screen lock. There's a setting in the menus for either two, five, or 10 minutes. Once the screen is locked, as you can see here, just tap this and it will unlock the screen and that will make your swipe function active once again. The next button is the favorites menu. This menu, when you first power on your core radio as new, you would have not set any yet, so there will not be anything in this menu yet. I have set a few just to show you. This is where you would want to place your most used menus, such as the function settings, receivers, your uh, model change menu, things like that. The next icon is the little servo. It's actually your servo monitor, and it functions just as it would in any radio system. We go into the servo monitor, and you can move the stick and see your full throw and actually see that that channel is active. The next button is the back button. I'll go through these really quickly and then demonstrate them for you. This is the home screen button and this is the forward button. So if you go into one of your menus, you can use the back button just to go back to the previous. Home will take you completely out to the home screen. If you want to use the forward button, say you're, you're wanting to set your rudder expo, go in here, set your rates and expo, and you can use your back button. If you forget to do something or want to change something from here, you can tap that forward button and it will go back to that previous menu. Again, this button will take you straight out to the home screen. The next menus are in the pull down. You just swipe down like you would swipe on any smartphone. So you should be really familiar with that. The first set here is your major menus. This is where you'll spend most of your time in programming a model. The next one over is for your model changing, model selection. We've got several set up here. We're already in the demo model, so I won't load that. But if you do load a model, it will show the same percentage as it did on boot up. And then once that percentage is complete, that model is active on the transmitter. The next one over is for your Wi-Fi menus. We do not have the Wi-Fi active yet. That will be coming in a future update so that you may update the radio and access other features through the wireless. In this video, we'll cover the ports on the front of the core radio. They are located underneath the hatch. Starting from the left, there is a headphone jack. This will output all of the tones and telemetry callouts of the core radio. In the future, it will also be used for outputting the voice callouts. Next over is the charge port. This has a BAT1 and BAT2 indicator. The core does have two individual battery packs for true redundancy. You'll see as it is plugged in, the indicators will light red. As the batteries become full, the indicators will turn green. The next thing over are the USB ports. There's a standard size and a micro size. These are currently used for updating the core radio. The last port on the far right is the servo PPM output. This is a five volt regulated servo driver. Plug in a servo and demonstrate. To take control of the servo after it is connected, just move any of the sticks and it will take control of that port. You can see it centers the servo nicely so you can set up your servo arms. You can use any of the controls on the core radio, including the momentary and two and three position switches to control this port. The PPM feature is currently not active, but will be useful in the future to connect to the flight simulator on your computer.